Monday morning. It's, it's a hurricane day. It, that means it's go time. And uh, this Monday, uh, the, the, the story of the day is going to theme around kindness. Like Bootsy said, we just finished the uh, Last Dance documentary with uh, MJ. If you haven't got a chance to watch that, check it out. It's really great, take you back to the 90s and uh, allow you to, uh, to re-fall in love with haircuts and giant suits and uh, ridiculous, uh, ridiculous fashion. But uh, the, 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 the piece that I'm pulling out of The Last Dance is, uh, from all the wonderful things that it shows is the, also the, the power of kindness. One of the things that Michael Jordan brought to his team was, aside from this crazy amount of talent, was uh, you know, a very aggressive and oftentimes negative uh, leadership philosophy and coaching philosophy. It's not unlike Steve Jobs, the way he would shout at people, demean people, uh, bully people uh, in practice and on the court. And uh, where the players were all, were all talking about it, you know, it, was, it was something that you had to survive to stay on the Chicago Bulls, not something that was building you up as a teammate, not something that was creating unit cohesion, but it was just something that you had to be able to survive playing with Michael Jordan. And uh, when Michael Jordan left the Bulls uh, at the end of that 98 season, he went into retirement, bought the Wizards, became a coach and, and, uh, and a player for the Washington Wizards, and the team didn't do very well. His coaching style, I don't know if he did any work on it, but uh, I would imagine that his personality did not translate to uh, the most compassionate coach just because of the way that he thought excellence was achieved versus uh, the way that a lot of his fellow players and teammates did. And so this is um, the difference between being right and doing the right thing. Like Michael Jordan was probably always right. Like, you know, he knew how to shoot, he knew how to pass, he knew how to play defense, he knew how to condition, he knew how to train, he knew how to focus. He was, one of his great gifts was being present. He was never confused about what was going on and he was never distracted. So he was, he was frequently had the right basketball answer, but the, the, what, what his teammates often needed from him was a helping hand up instead of a punch in the chest or a, uh, a, a kick to get them to move faster. Um, and and it, that, that strategy didn't work when he, was a co when he turned into a, a, a full-time coach. And that doesn't really work um, with, with any of us. Uh, I'm not a parent. Um, I, I know that there's parents among here, and I'll, I'll leave you to reflect on what your kids respond to more, or your partners or your, or your coworkers at work. But um, one of the things that I've noticed as a coach with humans is people actually want to do the right thing. They actually want to eat the broccoli, go to bed on time, you know, do the work. And what they need is uh, support and, and, um, and compassion in the process. And so the, you know, the, while that documentary was really awesome to, to see the, the, that Chicago Bulls team do all the things and learn about the players, it's really great. It also shows you the limitations that talent has when it comes to inspiring other humans to, to, to grow and change. And that's where we're going to uh, leave off with ourselves today because we're gonna grow and change. We're gonna work on our own behavior and we're gonna do that by being compassionate and kind to ourselves while we do this warm up and while we do this awesome 12 Warrior Day workout. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get our butts moving. How, is, how will the party start if I didn't say, let's get the party started. All right, so we've got a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna open up our pecs, our lats, our upper body. So we're gonna start with a kneeling uh, lat stretch. This one's simple. So instead of doing in the child's pose variation, what we're gonna do is I'm simply gonna reach across my body and I'm gonna chop into the floor and I'm gonna drag my hip back and I'm just gonna stretch that lat. And I can feel that stretching right at that cross section there of the ribs. And I'm gonna breathe into the stretch. So I'm breathing. And as I'm breathing, I'm gently pushing away from my hand. So I'm just gently drifting my hips away at that angle. And I can really feel that in my tricep, in my chest, in my shoulders. I can feel that everywhere. I'm gonna take one more breath here. 
And then I'm going to reach across to the other side. Stretch it out. Chop it into the floor. Breathing. One side is definitely going to be tighter than the other because we are asymmetrical beans most of the time. So pushing into the floor, opening up that rib cage, letting my big deep breaths open up that hip even further, stretching that rib cage even further. If you're not getting anything out of this, push that hand into the floor a little bit more deliberately and you'll find that it automatically lengthens that lap. Right. Now we're going to be back on our knees. We're going to interlace our fingers behind our back, lock out the elbows. That's going to rock the shoulders backwards and stretch those pecs. So I'm here. Shoulders are coming down and back. Triceps are locked. So I'm really pulling the shoulders apart from each other, rotating them out, stretching and opening that chest. So I'm already getting a, a decent bicep and pec stretch right here. Breathing in. Some of us, if you're like me, are pretty tight. So it's hard for me to hold on to my hands behind my back. If that's you, that's okay. You can have a belt or if you can grip something behind you that will help you, that's fine. Take it a couple breaths to loosen up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stretch each pec in isolation by getting on the ground and kicking over that, that hip. So I'm going to reach out, grip the floor, plant my foot, breathe. Reach, pulling my uh, head away or gently pushing away from the floor in front of me. Rocking and rolling. And then I'm going to roll, rotate the other way, reaching out. I'm going to kick my foot over the top, plant my hip into the ground. Whew. Feel that in my bicep, my chest. You can get a little bit more dramatic here because of the angle. So you could push off the floor if you want to. I'm already feeling it, so I'm not going to try and push myself too hard. And then we're going to come back to the center. So we're going to really work on the shoulders today. We're going to do a lot of upper body work in our circuit. So we really want everything to work well. We're going to start with shoulder circles from the ground. And what I mean by that is I'm going to be here on the floor and I'm going to squeeze my shoulder blades together, pull them up to the ear, push them apart, and then pull them down towards the, the waist. And I'm going to do all of that in sequence, so I'm going to create these big shoulder circles. So the scapula, because my elbows are locked, the scapula are really doing quite a bit. And I'm trying not to arch my low back, round my low back, I'm trying not to use any of the other joints, and then I'm going to reverse the direction. Lots of circles, big circles. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be standing up in the kneeling position and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to have my hands out. So I'm going to push forward, shrug up to the ears, shoulders back all the way down. Glutes are on, rib cage is down, so I'm flat. Everything is tight. The only thing I'm doing is moving those shoulders. 
Try not to move my head. Keep my glutes on. Rotate. Boom. So now we're going to integrate that scapula into the rest of the arm and shoulder. So I'm going to get in a, into a half kneeling position. So one foot is down, the other knee is down. Shoelaces are pushed into the ground, tucking that pelvis, op opening up that hip. Then my right leg is down. I'm going to draw a circle with my hand. I'm going to come all the way out, letting those fingertips get away from the shoulder. Keeping everything long, rib cage is going to stay down, especially when I come up overhead. When I get up with my bicep next to the ear, I'm going to shrug up even higher. Notice I'm taking time and I'm going to rotate at the, at the arm here. Go back, close the door. Shoulders going to go away from the ear, pushing down and back, tilting that pelvis, coming back to the beginning. So notice that every part of this clock I'm reminding my shoulder that it could separate from my ear, could separate from my trap, rotating out, palm facing out, rib cage is down, I should feel that stretch in my hip, come up to the top, everything's coming high, back and forward, 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 all the way back down to where we started. Yeah, getting strong. Now, other side. Flat in the back, dropping down that rib cage, reaching forward. Here I am, rotating out, all the way up. Rotating at the arm. All the way down, back to the ground. All the way back, rotating out, up, shrugging up, fingertips going away from that shoulder, really testing myself to use that maximum range of motion, maximum capacity. Shaking it out, yeah, yeah, ha. All right. Now we got to start warming up. We got a lot of exercises to do today, and uh, I want to get us prepared. So we're going to do some single leg walkouts. So I'm up on one foot, and I'm going to drop down. I'm going to walk out into a plank with one foot, crawl back, <laughs> try not to fall. That's one. I'm going to go five on my right leg, five on my left leg, and I'm going to do this. Now, if this is really challenging for you, that's okay. You can use two legs, you can modify the work. That was three, coming up on four here for me. But I want you to do the walkout. We're just warming up those legs, warming up the core and the arms, switching feet now. So I'm here, all the way down, all the way out. One, all the way down. Out, two, down, out, three, down. So we're going to do a total of ten, five with each leg, four, this is good for our balance, Oop, five, fell over. So I'm going to warm up our uh, hips and shoulders a little bit more with my favorite and yours, the walk around lunge, double wide stance, hands coming down inside, walking around, they come all the way in, and then I'm going to do that T-spine lift, don't forget to breathe. Boom. All the 
all the way back. Boom. Ah. All the way back. So we're going back and forth, opening up those hips, hamstring, groin. Just, this is like making your body do all of the things to its end ranges so that you are prepared in your training to use those muscles. We're really doing well now. Then we're gonna do a couple of sit outs to get those hamstrings and that, uh, that, that rot T-spine rotation really strengthened. And then we'll get started, but here I am. When I do my sit out, I'm gonna pivot to the outside foot, sit through. I'm gonna come back, pivot to the outside foot, sit through. And if that's easy, if you're like me and Steve and this is just too easy, then what you could do is kick out, drop in, drive up, hips are pointed at the sky, coming right back down, kick through, drive up, doing a little tripod reach. Just do a few of those. Now we're warmed up. Dust is knocked off. Let's look at our circuit today. Today we're going to be doing 12 warrior days and we got all kinds of good stuff for you. So today I want you to do a hinge pattern for our metabolic driver. So our, our sprint, because we're indoors, we're gonna be doing either cleans or high pull. So a high pull is here, butt back, chest up, popping through, lifting chest, you know, pull that weight to your chest, you're up on your toes. So I'm back, pow, back, pow, back, pow. That's a high pull. Now if you wanna do a, a, a kettlebell or a dumbbell clean, and you just pick it up from the ground up, snap it into your rack position, and that's one rep. So you can alternate hands, and that's fine. I'll let you pick what you're gonna do. So I know Reba likes to do those cleans with the 100 pound kettlebell, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna start with the high pull today and see how that feels on my shoulder. So I'm gonna do 10 right now, just to warm up. Butt back, power through, boom. But what we're doing is, we're working that posterior chain either way, the upper back either way. Make sure you're exhaling as you squeeze your butt, whew, driving that weight through all the way close to your body inside of your center, center of gravity. So we'll always end on that. That's our first day of Christmas is 10 reps. Our second day of Christmas is gonna be two eccentric push-ups. So two perfect push-ups and you can modify them to make them easier or harder. So the traditional eccentric, feet together, knees together, everything's tight, pulling yourself into the floor, 2,000, 3,000, back to the top, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Now if you need to use your knees to get up, you can. If you wanna make it more difficult, you could do an eccentric with the foot out, slow, really crank that core. You can modify your push-up to make it more difficult but start with that eccentric because two reps is all you need to build strength as long as you got that tempo. So we've got our eccentric push-up. Then we're gonna go to the upright row. So if you've got your dumbbell or your kettlebell, you're just going to pick it up and then you're going to lead with the elbows, pull it into your chest, pull it in, get your lift on, three reps. So two push-ups, three upright rows. Then you're going to do four bent rows. So I've got my dumbbell or kettlebell right here. I'm gonna get the steering wheel grip, bend over, squeeze my shoulder blades together, pull it into my chest, make it look good, feel good. If you have dumbbells, you're just going to, 
with that neutral grip, pull up those heavy pants. Rear delt flies. So, a lot of us don't have a bunch of dumbbells at home. If you have five pound dumbbells or small dumbbells, great, use them. I'm gonna use my arms, and what I'm gonna do is, for my rear delt fly, I'm gonna come back, my thumb is gonna be in line with my ear, and I'm gonna really just work on that technique, exercising that rear delt, squeezing my shoulder blades at the top. I'll do five reps right here. And that is my rear delt fly. If you have a band, you can use a band. Or if you have light weights, you could grab those. But we're only gonna do five reps. Then, we're gonna do the lateral lunge. So the lateral lunge, I'm gonna step out, and we're not doing a Cossack lunge today, but what I wanna do is, I want you to put all your load on the inside leg, the, or the uh, outside leg, the lead leg, and then I want you to drag yourself into that foot. And then step out to the other side, drag yourself into that foot. So you're allowing that lead leg to do all the work. That trail leg is stretching, and then you're really allowing that one side of your body to bear the load. That's great core training. That's definitely gonna help the stability of your hip and knees as you go. So we're gonna do six per side. This one will take a while. That's okay, don't rush it. If you have light weight, you can hold it. But for me, this is kind of takes some concentration. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the body weight for now. And we'll see how I'm feeling as we get ramped up and amped up through the workout. So, after the lunges, then we're gonna do the squat. Now, this will be our first squat of the day. So, you have your weight in your hands, spines flattened out, feet shoulder width apart, heels shoulder width apart, toes gently out. I'm gonna pull myself down into the hole, drive my butt forward. Pull myself down into the hole, drive my butt forward. So I'm doing that, being really powerful and explosive with the glutes. Boom, building that strength on the way up. You only have seven reps. It's about a second down, two seconds maybe, pow. Coming back up. So it's not speed strength, it's strength strength, meaning we wanna load those muscles and then get that contraction. Seven squats. Then the military crunch. So if you have a light weight, you can use it. But we're gonna be on our back. Feet are planted, I've got my weight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lead with the weight and try to push it to the ceiling up overhead. So I'm trying to reach the sky with that weight. So I don't have anything now, maybe I'll get a medicine ball, but you're gonna do eight reps of the military crunch. I'll get a, I'll get a weight out here so I can play with it. So, what you do is, if you've got a dumbbell, you grip it. All right. Military crunch, calf raises. So, to review, pressure stays on the inside of the foot. Ball of the big toe is where we wanna end. So I'm here, boom, all the way to the top. Just like hit that top for a split second, keeping that pressure on the inside of the foot. Feet naturally wanna roll out. You're gonna feel that in your glutes, your calves, everything. So we're jamming it there, all the way back, jamming it there. All the way back. Yes. Okay. Now, if you have weights in your hand, awesome. I might hold on to a kettlebell or a little like, like dumbbell, whatever you got. But most importantly is you get all the way to the top of that foot and with your pressure on the inside. From the calf raise, we go into the knee grab. So I'm going to be on the ground, throwing my hands, gripping my knees, throwing my hands, gripping my knees. Yes, yes. Now when the shoulder blades touch the ground, that's one. So you don't count it at the top, you count it at the bottom. 
you about to begin, end where you began. We'll be doing 10 of these. And then uh, from there, we're going to the speed skater, where we're on one foot, hopping over to another, trying to bend the knee as much as we can get away with, loading it. I am not a speed skater or a ballerina, but I do like the lateral movement here. I like the grace. I like the deceleration on one leg, which is really helpful. That increases safety and training, increases competency when we're doing sprints or anything else. But we're gonna do 11 per side. If you forget where we're at, don't worry. I will be reminding you, because I will be cussing up the storm by the time we get there. Swimmers. The 12th day of Christmas is the swimmer. Okay. Here I am on the floor, reaching out, pulling in. Nothing's touching the ground, fingers are splayed, shoulder blades are coming down towards my hip bones, and then back up. So I'm working everything here, upper back, making it look good, making it feel good. So. Here we are, ready to rock. I'm gonna set the timer for 22 minutes. We have to get dessert on after that so we can't go too much further because I've had jaw jacket and warming you guys up for too long. So, it's 12 days of Christmas. We're going in reverse order. Just follow me, I'll be narrating what we're gonna be doing. I'll be resting periodically. I'm gonna to try to keep moving the whole time. If you need a break, you just get a break. If something hurts, move on to the next exercise or modify it. No worries. Get your water. Everything should be ready and set out. We're going to start with the 10 high poles, which will always be the end of our, end of our circuit. 10 high poles, 10 cleans, whichever you choose. <clears throat> Starting in 5, 4, Three, two, all right, we're off to the races. And I'm moving. So I'm gonna do 10 reps. I'm up on my calves on this one, two, three, four, five. Again, it's not a speed strength day, six. So I'm just working on getting that maximum contraction. Eight, nine, elbows lead, 10. All right, two eccentric push ups. So I'm on the ground. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. That was one. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. That's two. Back to the 10 high poles. Here I am. And 10 reps. Two. But back. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, three upright rows. Wow, we're really roasting those shoulders today. All right, Josh, good choice. One, two, three. Heart rates are already high, that's good. Two eccentric push ups. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, four. Boom. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4. Ha! All right. 10 high poles. Haven't done those in a while. Let's get back to it. And one, two, but back. Three, four, five. Pressure on the inside of the foot. Six, seven, eight, nine. 10, all right, bent row. Okay, so you get your weight, get your grip, bending over, one, two, three, four, excellent. Upright row, standing up, and one. Glutes on two, three, perfect. Two eccentric push-ups. So I'm back down. 
and 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 2, 10, high poles. Well, we're making great time. We've got 19 minutes left. I think we've already burnt 10,000 calories. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Five. Rear delt flies. So I'm bending over. One. Two, getting long, thumb by the ear, three, four, back is flat, five, four, bent rows, come back, one, two, three, four, three, upright rows, one, two, Three, two, eccentric push-ups. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, yeah. 10 high pulls. All right, warriors. It's okay to be feeling it right now. It's okay to be tired, but just can't act tired. Every rep counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six lateral lunges. Okay, we're on the sixth round. Halfway through, stepping out, one, and that's one. Coming out, loading that lead leg, two, and that's two. Out, three, three, four, four, five, five. Six and six. Rear delt flies. But back. One, two, three, four, five. You might have noticed I have little weights sitting here that I wouldn't dare use for that. Just pointing that out. Four bent rows. One. Two, three, retract that scapula, four, high pull, one, two, three, oh yeah, three, two, push ups, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, ha. 10 high pulls. All right, Warriors, 15 minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Plenty of time to be destructive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Word. Seven squats. Okay, seven squats. So you pick your weight or your body weight. Doesn't matter. Flatten that spine. One, two, squeeze those glutes. Three, four, five, six, ah, seven.
lateral lunges. Stepping out, loading that lead leg. Stepping out, two, three. Chest stays up, four. Five. And six. Five rear delt flies. We are moving. One, two, three, four, and five. Four bent rows. Grip. One, two, three, four, three. Upright rows. One, two, ha ha. All right, warriors. Remember, drink water as you need to, rest as you need to. I'm just gonna get a sip. We're on round seven, finishing round seven. Two eccentric push-ups. Two thousand, three thousand, one, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, two. Ten high pulls. Twelve minutes, thirty seconds remaining. Making it look good. Making it feel good. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! From there, going into the military crunch. Remember, we're on round eight. Eight military crunches. So, Gonna be on our backs. One, two, three. Gonna lead with that load. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, seven goblet squats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six lateral lunges. So I feel my hips getting more flexible when I'm doing this. So you can go deeper. Out. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Drop those hips four. Stick them down. Five. And six. Six. Okay. Rear delt flies. We're at five. If you're ahead of me, good job. You have 10 minutes left. One, two, three. Control that descent, Josh. Four. Power up and five, four rear uh, bent over rows. Getting after it. One, two, three, four, three upright rows. One, two, three, three, 
two eccentric push-ups. We're still getting on it, still staying on it. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, ah, yes, 10 high poles, high poles, so I'm here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, ha, ha, whoo, calf raises, we're at calf raises now, round 9, staying after it, ha, huh. I'm gonna try and do this with my uh, kettlebell. One, two, pressure on the inside of the foot, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ugh. Nine, military crunch. I'll reach it all the way up. One, two, three, four. Stretch yourself, reach up there. Five, six, seven, eight. Seven squats. Every rep is a masterpiece. So, deep in the hole, drop down. Squeeze those glutes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lateral lunges, get that appropriate depth, load that lead leg, one, two, three, four, five, Six, five flies. One, two, three, four, five. Four. Bent rows. One, two, three, four, three, high pull. One, two, three, two eccentric push up. Five minutes remaining, Warriors. This is the downhill portion of the battle. We've got to finish strong. Fourth quarter. 1,000, 2,000, 1, 1,000, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. Ten knee grabs after your high pulls. We're dropping to the floor. Three minutes, 50 seconds left. Get those knee grabs. We're doing 10, three, four, all the way up, all the way down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, yeah, 10. Nice work, warriors. Stand strong. Calf raises. After those knee grabs, you're up. Pressure on the inside of your foot. One, two, three, four. All the way up into the toes. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And, oh, whoops, that was just nine. Military crunches after the calf raise. One, two, we're just doing eight of these. Four, five, ha, come on, Josh. Six, seven, two minutes and 30 seconds left. Eight, seven squats. Getting the reps in that you can get in. Getting the reps in that you can get in. Quality reps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on, Josh. Six, lateral lunges. Making it happen. Two minutes remaining. It's a two minute drill. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. All right. Rear delt flies. 90 seconds left. Hello, sir. One, two, three, four, five. Rear delts. Four, bent row. One, two, three, four, three high pulls. You got this. One, two, three, two eccentric push-ups. Two eccentric push-ups. Make them good. We're not in a hurry. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, up. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, up. High pulls. Get some. 10 reps, but back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And time. So, it's dessert time. It's time for the, uh, the medicine to be delivered. Oh. Okay. Remember the dessert. Knee grabs. 
T-spine push-ups. Squat with hamstring bias. So, knee grabs first. We're on the ground. We did these already. Now it's time to clean them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Word. Okay. Now here we are. T-spine push-ups. So if you're all push up out, we need you to focus on form. So get on a bench or a countertop or a bed, something like that. Now, I'm gonna do a wide stance push-up. Come down, pop up, reach for the sky. That's one. We're gonna do five per side it's for a total of 10. Three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, yeah, ten. I feel like I did a couple extra, but that's okay. T spine, get that rotation on. Bootsy, you want to narrow up those feet a little bit? There you go. Now get that butt below the knees. There you go. And then fingers under the shoes when you stand up. There you go, chin to chest. So it's hard to keep the chin to chest. Warriors, squat with hamstring bias. This, this does so much. I should do a separate video on how powerful this exercise is. What we're doing is, we're cleaning up the squat pattern, we're stretching the hamstrings, and we're also doing some neural flossing. Because of the position of our back, neck, and spine, we're moving around the sciatic nerve and allowing it to de be, get unadhered from some of the tissue around it. So we're down in the squat, gripping on the inside, butt down, chest up, working on that T-spine extension, inhaling as I reach. Then when I'm here, I'm chin to chest. So I'm rounding out that back, chin to chest, standing all the way up. Ugh. What that does is that forces some of that mobility to a neural level. Ugh. It's hard to keep that chin to chest. That's why we got to do it. Again, reaching up, chin to chest. Fingertips are on the inside of the foot. You can get there. This is number four for me. Ugh. One more. Ah. Moral of the story. Talent is awesome. Hard work plus talent, unbeatable. But if you want to be more than the, the greatest individual or the, the most talented individual, if you want to create a culture and a team where excellence is a way of life, you also have to integrate some kindness. Because people, people like, everyone loves a winner but you don't always win and you have to have you have to have some reason for people to come back and to want to be around you so whether you're Steve Jobs, you're Michael Jordan, you're uh, coach Josh or you're anyone else trying to get anything done with more than one person which is I think everything that we're ever trying to do in the world don't forget the kindness part uh, because then uh, then your your legacy will be more than a trophy, it will be an example that other people are looking to follow for, uh, for the rest of time. Continue to show up, be kind, build muscle, burn fat, and bring forth the warrior within. I'm coming up, so you better get this party started. Hey!